Ha ha, fooled you. On the wrong side. All right, well, hey, welcome back. We're getting back into our second day of ELA of the week. And we're talking about that story called A Difficult Decision. Everybody has choices in life. And every choice you make leads to two more choices and two more choices. And if you continue down that good road, well, you'll be nice and healthy and you'll have lots of great friendships and you'll have lots of great relationships with your family. Um, it's really important to be honest, to think about how other people feel. And, th and this book has a lot to do with that. Um, and people may feel differently. The people don't have to feel the same way. Um, you know, some people might have chose not to return that. Some people might chose to return it. Ooh, wow, it's a really big bumblebee. But let's get ready for the second page of the story. Paul thinks that it is wrong to keep the game. And I think Paul's right, because he's thinking about how the kid that lost that might feel. He doesn't even know him, but he's starting to think that, it's called, when grown-ups say it, it's called putting yourself in someone else's shoes. And you kind of try to understand how someone else feels, not actually putting their sneakers on but you're putting yourself in their mind and thinking why they think a certain way and then having understanding about it. And that has to do with tolerance. And we talked about that this uh, last week um, in our character builder lesson. But it is wrong to keep the game, Paul said. Now he's getting yelled at from his friends. Friend is trying to tell him, do the right thing even when no one is watching. When there are issues like this at school, you help solve the problems there. Now you aren't even taking your own advice. He's talking to his friend, trying to tell him he's about to make a bad choice by keeping that. Then Paul added, I volunteered my thoughts. You can tape the help I offered or not. So now he's telling his friend, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you're a big boy. You make a choice. and make sure it's a good one because he's right. You can't force people to feel a certain way or to, or to believe a certain thing. You just can't. They're gonna do what they wanna do anyway. But by saying this, he's saying, I'm gonna let you make that decision. It's not an easy one, but try to make the best one that it's gonna make most people happy. That's a pretty good friend because he's not being controlling and not trying to be a boss and tell his friend exactly what to do. He knows his friend has choices and he knows his friend should make good ones. Let's hope he does make the right one. Paul was right. I couldn't keep the game because it wasn't mine. The person who lost the game would be upset. So now he's starting to think about how other people will feel. That has, that has to do with being sensitive to other people. That's really important. I cleared my throat <clears throat> and I said in a deep voice, I've determined that you're right. I'm delighted that you're doing the right thing, said Paul. So why did Wyatt change his mind? He stopped and he really thought about it. He thought about what would happen if he accidentally dropped this. Maybe he thought about how he would feel and how he, doesn't, he wouldn't like that feeling. Well, now he started thinking about it and I think he's ready to make a very good choice with, his, with what he found. And you know what, right away, as soon as you see something really cool like that and you think that, wow, it's mine and it's free, you might think things like that. But after you think big boy thoughts and big girl thoughts, you say to yourself, that's not a good choice because that's stealing. Even if you're the one that found it, if you don't look for the person of whose it is, it's kind of stealing. Stealing means taking something without the permission of someone else. Even though they lost it, if you're, not, if you're gonna hold it from them and not tell them, that's the wrong thing to do. So, uh, make sure that if you ever find something like this, you tell mommy or daddy. Very important. Uh, so today we're going to be um, drawing a box around the sentence that tells 
How was Wyatt's point of view changed? What made him change his right? Well, maybe he thought about that boy that was, or that person that was going to be upset. I mean, you know, you ever, you ever think about the last time you lost something? You might be check, you might check your pockets, you check your car, or I check my car. Um, you check the house, you check the room, and you check the three places where you know it's going to be. And then when it's not there, you start to panic a little, start freaking out. You start saying, oh man, I don't know if I'm going to find this. Well, it could be a... Uh, it could be a scary thing depending on what it is. Like if I'm at Great Adventure and one of my kids runs away and I lose them for a second, that could be the most scariest thing on earth for a parent. But if I drop my napkin at the dinner table and I have nothing to wipe my face with, well, that's not such a big deal. Maybe that's not the greatest example. But anyway, uh, have a fantastic day, everyone. And remember, if you find something... Don't keep it, even if it's a giant bag of money. Because you know what? Chances are um, doing the right thing will make everybody feel the best. And you have to think about how other people will feel. It all goes back to holding the door for your neighbor like we do at school. When you put one arm out and you wait till somebody else grab the door and then you can let go. That's not just for the school. That's at 7-Eleven. That's at the movie theater, that's at the mall, that's any time you walk into something that doesn't have those automatic doors where you have to push it open, most libraries. Um, that's thinking about other people too, okay? Think about their point of view. I know if, if there's ever like some older woman, older man, um, I show lots of respect to people that are older, so I wait a little bit of extra time and I'll hold the door, and if they're far, far away, I might go in the store. But if they're kind of far, I say, you know what? I can be patient, I can wait, and I'll hold for them. And you know what they say every time? They always say the same thing. Oh, thank you so much. You didn't have to do that. I say, no, it's okay. It makes me feel good. Helping others is what it's all about. Hold that door for your neighbor. All right. Adios, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Sayonuch.